This is quiz 22. Problem number one, you're supposed to sketch the graph of the cosine on the interval from minus 3 pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, and then find all absolute local maxes and mins from that graph. So no calculus in this, just knowing what maxes and mins are. So we need the graph of the cosine. And the graph of the cosine starts up here at 0, because the cosine of 0 is 1. And then it decreases down to 0 when we get to pi over 2. So this point is pi over 2. And then cosine of pi is negative 1. <clears throat> and we're supposed to go from uh, more than pi to 3 pi over 2. So this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 takes us back to 0. So this is from 0 to pi over 2. This point would be pi, and this point would be 3 pi over 2. And then the graph is symmetric on the opposite side of the y-axis. And of course, it's going to, well, it's going to look like this, but this is minus pi over 2, minus pi, and minus 3 pi over 2. So that's as far as we need to go. <coughs> With the graph of the cosine. And of course this point is positive 1 up here, and this point down here would be a negative 1. All right, so we need to figure out what are absolute and local maxes and mins. Obviously <coughs> um, the absolute max of this function is 1, so x equal to 0 is an absolute max. And on the interval from minus 3 pi over 2, so we're only looking from here to plus 3 pi over 2, there's no other point that's as big as that. Now absolute mins are going to be down here at negative 1, and there's two of those. So at x equal to minus pi over 2, minus pi, sorry, minus pi this point, and this point, and x equals pi. We have absolute mins. And at these points, minus 3 pi over 2, and at plus 3 pi over 2, both of those, those are going to be endpoint maximums because there's nothing else. This part of the curve and this part of the curve are not there because the domain starts at minus 3 pi over 2, ends at 3 pi over 2. So these are endpoint maxes, or local maxes, if you wish. Either of those would count. Okay, And that's it, as far as I can see on this problem. All right, that's number one. Number two, we are supposed to find all the critical numbers for uh, this function, g of t equals absolute 3t minus 4. Anytime you deal with the absolute value function, you have to break it into pieces. So you have to ask yourself, when is this thing positive and where is this thing negative? Because when that thing, that is 3t minus 4, is positive, then you can erase the absolute value signs. When it's negative, you have to stick a minus in front. So when is 3t minus 4 positive or greater than or equal to 0? Well, that would be when 3t is greater than or equal to 4, or t greater than or equal to 4 thirds. So that's the break point. So this thing is equal to 3t minus 4 if t is anything bigger than or equal to 4 thirds. Because if t is bigger than 4 thirds or equal to 4 thirds, then 3t minus 4 will be a positive number. Just think about plugging in a t that's bigger than that, and your answer will be positive. So the absolute value of a positive is just that number, so you don't need the absolute value signs. On the other hand, if t is anything less than 4 thirds, then the absolute value of 3t minus 4 will be the absolute value of a negative quantity. The absolute value makes it negative by sticking a minus in front of the whole thing. So it's minus 3t minus 4. Okay, so that is the, the function that you're dealing with. And now you can just take the derivative by taking the derivative of each of these pieces. 
So the derivative g prime of x, oops, this is g prime of t, isn't it? So g prime of t would be the derivative in pieces. And so if you're looking at the piece that's bigger than or equal to 4 thirds, you would get an answer of 3 for the derivative because that's the slope of the line, which will be the slope of the tangent line. And on the other end, it's going to be minus 3. But you notice you're going to have a problem here at 4 thirds. So this is if t is bigger than 4 thirds and if t is less than 4 thirds. But the problem at 4 thirds is which of these two numbers do you have to use? And the answer is you can't use either of them because the derivative would have to be the limit from both sides. And from one side you're getting an answer of 3, from the other side you're getting an answer of minus 3. So the graph of this thing would look like you know, on one side of 4 thirds you're going to have a positively sloped line like this. And on the other side of 4 thirds you're going to have a, a negatively sloped line. I think they actually come together. Let's just make sure they come together in a V. As t approaches 4 thirds you're getting 0 here, right? And 0 here. So yes, this is the graph that you're looking at. This is the graph of the absolute value but shifted to 4 thirds. So the derivative at 4 thirds will fail to exist because it's one number from the right, namely 3, and another number, negative 3, from the left. So at 4 thirds there's no derivative. So g prime is a function whose domain excludes 4 thirds. Okay, so this is the derivative, and so g prime does not exist at 4 thirds, does not exist exists. So this is a critical number. 4 thirds turns into a critical number for this function. But we can see the graph of it and 4 thirds is actually 4 thirds t equal to 4 thirds is the absolute min for this function. But the question, this, this was not part of the question. The question was what are all the critical numbers? And the critical numbers are places where the derivative is either equal to 0 or where the derivative does not exist. In this function, there are no places where the derivative is equal to zero. But there's certainly a place where the derivative does not exist, and that's this one. So t equal to 4 thirds is the only critical number for this function. And as you can see from the graph, it's an absolute min. That's number two. Okay, same question for number three. We want to find the critical numbers for the function x squared e to the minus 2x. So I hope that you're remembering how to calculate derivatives. This is a product, so you're going to have to use the product rule to calculate f prime. So we go first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to any power is e to that power again, exponential function, except the chain rule says you've got to multiply by the derivative of what's up there. The derivative of that is minus 2. So that's first times the derivative of the second plus the second, which is e to the minus 2x times the derivative of the first, the derivative of x squared is 2x. So this is the derivative and the critical numbers are the places where the derivative either is equal to 0 or fails to exist. Here obviously the derivative will exist everywhere. So where is this thing going to be equal to 0? So we set it equal to 0 and solve that equation. Solving an equation usually involves factoring. Factor whenever you can. So factor as much as you possibly can. Looks like I can get e to the minus 2x to come out. I can also factor out one factor of x and I can factor out a 2. So let's take everything out, whatever we can. So what's left is we're going to have one x left. We're going to have a minus from here. And then what's left here, we took the e to the minus 2x out. We took the x out, we took the 2 out. So all that's left is 1. Okay, and this thing has to be equal to zero. Well, how can this be equal to zero? It's a product, so the only way a product can be equal to zero is if one of the factors can be zero. So obviously that means either x has to be equal to zero from here, or x has to be equal to one from here. And really, if you think about the exponential function, e to any power is never equal to zero. So there's no way to make this equal to zero. So there are actually just two critical numbers for this function, x equals 0 
and x equal to 1. Okay, last problem. We were supposed to find the absolute max and absolute min of the function x minus log x. So f of x equals x minus log x on the interval from 1 half to 2. Okay, well, the log is nasty at 0, but this interval stays away from 0. So this is a perfectly continuous differentiable function on that interval. And we know that every continuous function on a closed bounded interval must have an absolute max and an absolute min, so we should be able to do this. And in the problem we were to assume that the log of 2 is 0 0.69 and the log of a half is minus 0 0.69. So we need to analyze this function for all critical numbers and the endpoints because we know that the absolute max must occur at either a critical number or at an endpoint. So we're going to evaluate at every one of those numbers. So really a good way to do this is to build yourself a little table of x's and y's for each of the possible candidates. Remember this is kind of like being a detective. So you want to say what are the candidates? Well endpoints are always candidates so we put one half in as one of the x's and two as one of the x's that we have to check out what f of x is. And then any other numbers that come up as critical numbers. Okay so we take the derivative f prime at x and we get 1 minus 1 over x. And we ask ourselves, when is this thing going to be equal to 0 and when is this thing going to be undefined? Well, this thing will be undefined at 0, but 0 is not in the domain, so that doesn't count. The only critical numbers that we're looking for are places now where this thing will be not undefined but equal to 0. So we solve this equation 1, equal, 1 minus 1 over x equals 0, so that's 1 equals 1 over x, and as long as x is not equal to 0, which we know, we multiply both sides by x, and so we get x equals 1. So we have one more critical number to check. So those are our only candidates for critical numbers. So we just plug them in. So we plug in 1 half for x, so we get 1 half minus the log of a half. And the, and the quiz said the log of a half is minus 0 0.69. So minus 0 0.69 is that number. And then Plugging in 2, we're going to get 2 minus the log of 2, and the problem said the log of 2 is 0.69, so we just put 0.69 here, and then the log, and then we have to put in 1. When x is 1, we get 1 minus the log of 1, log of 1 is 0. So these three numbers turn into 1, or in the middle, 2 minus 0.69 turns into. 1 point, oh, what is it, uh, 3, 1, I guess that's right, 1.31, and this would be 0. 0.5 minus minus, so that's plus 0. 0.69, so that's going to be 1.19. So obviously this guy is the winner as being the biggest, so 2 is the absolute max, x equals 2, and x equal to 1 would be the absolute min. And that's it for quiz number 22.